Welcome to my tutorial on exception handling. In this tutorial, I will cover all three try except, try except else, and try finding logic blocks. I will also cover raise and assert statements and how to create your own custom exceptions in Python. So let's start by defining exceptions. Exceptions are unexpected events that occur during the execution of a program and disturb the normal flow of instructions. In Python, exceptions are defined in terms of classes. And when an unexpected error occurs, the Python interpreter creates an object of the appropriate exception class. Python has plenty of built-in exceptions. For all built-in exceptions, you can go to the Python official documentation. In Python, the base exception is the parent class of all built-in exceptions. But when you create your own custom exceptions, you create them by subclassing exception class. We will cover all this later in this tutorial. Let's see a very simple example in which I divide a number by 0. As we all know, it is not possible to divide a number by 0. So Python also doesn't allow us such operations and create a 0 division error exception and terminates our program. 0 division error is one of the built-in exceptions in Python and thrown by Python interpreter when any number is divided by numeric 0. In order to handle such exceptions and to avoid unwanted behavior of our program, we must put all critical operations that might generate exception in a try block. Now when an exception occurs, the interpreter stops the executing statement in the try block and looks for an accept clause that matches the exception that has occurred. If the interpreter finds such clause that matches the exception, the control is passed to the first statement in accept clause. It is totally up to us how we handle exceptions. If no error occurs, the interpreter skips the accept block and the normal flow of the program continues. But if Python interpreter finds no matching accept clause after exception has occurred, the program will terminate with an error message. Now let's see an example of try accept block. In this example, the try block contains a suspicious code in which I divide variable a by 0. The accept block contains the code that will be executed when an exception occurs. The accept statement without any additional parameters catches all exceptions. I can even write base exception class or exception class after the accept statement. And as I've mentioned before, both base exception and exception are parent classes from which all other exception classes inherit. So all three statements are equal. Now if you look at the output, you can see Python has executed the code from accept block. And unlike our last example, our program didn't crash. Now in the next example, I'm dividing the integer a by an uninitialized variable b. Now Python interpreter creates an value error exception. Because this accept statement catches all exceptions, the value error exception will also be caught by this accept block. And Python executes the code from the accept block. So this accept statement without any additional parameters doesn't make any distinction among various exceptions that might be raised in a try block. This is actually not a good programming practice because we often don't want to handle all exceptions in same way. Now let's see an example in which I only handle zero division error exception. In this example, I'm expecting that the user enters only integer value which is greater than zero. If user enters an integer value which is greater than zero, everything works fine and Python skips the accept block. But if the input is zero, Python terminates the program and executes the code from accept block, as shown in this example. If you look at the code, the parameter after accept statement is the name of class, whose only instances the accept block catches. Now when you enter a string value, Python will not execute code from accept block because the accept statement only catches zero division error exceptions, and not value error exceptions, so our program crashes. In order to catch multiple exceptions, Python allows us to have multiple accept blocks after the try block. In this example, the first accept block catches only zero division error exception, whereas the second accept block catches only value error exception. The accept statement without any argument catches all other exceptions. It is also possible to pass multiple exceptions as tuple as shown in this example. So this accept statement catches both zero division error and value error exceptions. 
It is also possible to assign exception object caught by exception block to a variable using as keyword. This allows us to gather further information on exception objects as shown in this example. Now let's look at the try except else block. The optional else block will only be executed if there were no exceptions thrown in the try block. So you can put your unsuspicious code in the else block. Now the question arises why I can't put the code in my try block as I have done in my last examples. Yes, you can put all your code in the try block, but the else block minimizes the amount of code in the try block and improves the readability. And in Python, readability counts. Now let's look at try except final block. The purpose of final block is to ensure that something must be done whether an exception occurs or not. It is generally used to release external sources like closing the files or sockets. Let's see an example. In this example, I'm asking user to enter a valid integer number. In the following statement, I'm dividing variable a by user input. Now when the input is 0, Python raises 0 division error exception. As you can see the output, Python has executed the code from final block before terminating the program. So whether there will be an exception or not, Python will always execute code written in the final block on the way out of the try statement. You can also have try finally and else block altogether. Now let's look at raise statement. The raise statement allows us to raise both built-in as well as custom exceptions. In this example, I raise value error exception in my try block. It is also possible to pass arguments which give specific details about the exception while raising an exception, as shown in the next example. The only difference is that when you print the exception object, Python will also print the given arguments. Raise statement without any argument re-raise the last exception. This is useful if you want to perform some actions after catching an exception and want to raise the exception again. If there was no exception before, raise statement will raise the type error exception. Now let's move to assert statement. Assert statement also exists in many other programming languages like C++ and Java. The assert statement evaluates a Python expression and raises an assertion error exception only if the expression evaluates the boolean false. In this example, if the number entered by user is greater than zero, the expression inside the assert statement becomes true and everything works fine. But if the expression inside the assert statement becomes false, Python raises assertion error exception and terminates the program. You can also pass an optional message to assert statement. This will be printed next to the assertion error exception. Now let's move to final part of this tutorial and that is how to define custom exceptions. Custom exceptions are very useful and there are many reasons for defining custom exceptions. For example, when there are no built-in exceptions that can handle special situations that might arise in your program. Let's see a very simple example. Here I have created a user-defined exception called my error exception, which inherits all the attributes and method from exception class. Although base exception is the base class for all built-in exceptions in Python, but Python recommends exception class as parent class for custom exceptions. You can also create custom exception by subclassing any standard Python exception class. My error exception class contains only pass keyword, which lets its parent class to figure out what to print when my error exception is raised. Now in main, when user enters an input which is less than 10, I raise my error exception with two optional arguments. The init method of exception class is designed to accept any number of arguments and it store them as tuple named args, as shown in this example. So this was a very simple example of a custom exception, without even overriding any method of its parent class. In my next example, I have overridden both init and string magic methods of exception class, and my error exception class also contain a custom method called close file. This can be any method which fulfill your requirements to handle the custom error. I hope now you have basic understanding of exceptions in Python. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for other tutorials.